In this video, we're going to talk about social engineering. Now, Microsoft has this listed as a core security principle, but I'm going to disagree with them because when I think about social engineering, I think about it as an attack methodology, not as a core security principle like the CIA triad, AAA, defense in depth, least privilege, and so forth. But because they have it listed here and we're following the domain objectives, we're going to talk about it here. So social engineering, well, pretty much all of us have heard of it. So social engineering, it's a way to bypass our technology protections by using a variety of different tactics and methods that we're going to talk about in this video to encourage somebody to perform a specific action or to give up a piece of crucial information. So when we think about that, a very common way that people perform social engineering is that they'll call somebody, they'll impersonate somebody, and they'll try to get that person to provide them a certain amount of information or to perform a specific action. So a very common one is if you live here in the United States, there are scammers, social engineering scammers, impersonators, typically out of India, where they are impersonating IRS agents. They'll call people up saying that they owe money, that they're going to put a lien on their house, that there's a warrant out for their arrest. And if they don't pay them within the X amount of days or X amount of hours, then a sheriff deputy is going to arrive at their house to arrest them with the goal of the person sending them money. So that's a very common form of social engineering. If we think about organizations, you'll have people that will call um, and they'll commonly do exercises where uh, a contractor will perform social engineering to look at how well the employees are trained and they're aware of social engineering. They'll call and try to get them to reset passwords, try to get them to provide information, try to get them to provide their passwords and so forth, just to do an audit and an analysis of the information security uh, management policies that are in place for organizations. So let's take a look at different types of social engineering attacks. And going back to my IRS example, where we have scammers, typically out of India, um, this goes back into conning people and impersonating IRS agents to get people to do something. So we can do conning and impersonation. You can also use flattery. So you can, you can be flattering to somebody to try to get them to provide you information or to do some sort of an action as well. Those are very common. One type of social engineering attack that we're, we're gonna talk about later in this course as well is phishing. So phishing is a way to send a fraudulent email with the purpose of tricking somebody into revealing personal information, such as your bank account. So uh, for example, you may get an email and uh, and we're gonna talk about this more, where something there's something urgent that you have to respond to and there's a deadline and they get you to click a link and it looks like, for example, let's say it's your bank. Um, it looks like your bank, but if you look at the URL, it's not your bank's URL. They try to get you to log in and when you go to log in, well, guess what? You're gonna provide them your bank credentials. So your username and password to get into your bank account. So phishing is a methodology and, and we get a lot of it. A lot of us get it in our spam boxes. So if you have Gmail, if you click on the spam box, you're going to see all sorts of phishing emails in there. So that's phishing. Piggybacking and tailgating. This is a different type of social engineering. This is a way for somebody to try to get into a secure area of an organization by following somebody in through a secure door. So a lot of organizations, what they'll have is if we have our um, proximity scammer cards to get into a scare door where you, you scan it, they have policies and procedures and training where they say if somebody tries to tailgate behind you and come in the door, you're not supposed to allow them. You're supposed to look at their credentials or tell them to scan in as well. So if people aren't po following those procedures, then they are going in and getting into those secure areas um, without having to provide credentials and potentially being a malicious user trying to get in there. A way to prevent this is something called a man trap. And a man trap, the way that it's set up is there are two doors 
it can be a, a different setup, but a common way is there's two doors and they're both secure doors. You scan into one door and you can't scan out through the other door in a hallway until the first door is closed. So you go in, the first door closes, you're in a hallway, there's two doors between you. You have to proceed to the second door, but you cannot proceed until the first door is closed. And that's a way to mitigate the issue of piggybacking and tailgating. The last one is dumpster diving. And when I was in graduate school, for my MBA program and in one of our information assurance classes, we had to perform a dumpster diving activity. And so you would go around campus and so forth and see what type of sensitive information you could get out of looking through people's thrown away uh, paper documents in their garbage cans in the offices. And you'd be surprised the information that people throw away. I mean, you'd be surprised the type of information people throw away in their houses and people throw away within organizations. Where I work, we have bins inside the building that they look like big garbage cans that are locked and they have a little area where you can throw paper in um, just like you would in a mailbox and that is securely uh, taken away and shredded by an organization that we're contracted with and personally at home any sort of sensitive information with my personally identifiable information I shred it with a cross shredder before I throw it out but you'd be surprised how many people don't do that and you can obtain all sorts of information regarding a person or an organization just by looking at that documentation because they're not shredding it. So that's dumpster diving. And a lot of people really don't think about dumpster diving. You know, you get something you don't want to, you throw it in the garbage. And you don't think that somebody's going to go in and look at your information. So those are the attacks. Now let's talk about mitigating social awareness. And this gets back to our previous lecture where I talked about policies, procedures, training, and awareness. In, in all reality, it all comes down to user training and awareness. And this needs to be ongoing. It should be at least every single year. There needs to be some sort of an announcement or some sort of updating training um, to keep people aware of the issue of social engineering. So training and awareness, that's number one. And when you're training people and you're making them aware of social engineering, you need to tell them to be suspicious and cautious when people are calling you, when people, when you receive an email that looks suspicious and they're asking for information, you need to be suspicious and cautious. And if somebody is trying to do that, verify their information. If somebody is calling you and saying that they're from the corporate office or they're with the IRS, ask them, you know, okay, well, give me your callback number. Where are you located? If you're in the corporate office, you know, what's your number? What's your employee ID badge so I can look you up? You want to verify their identity. And when it comes to things like this, let's say you get a phishing email, don't always trust your email. Now, and the study material and the Microsoft guides, they say don't use email, which is very unrealistic. And I, I would kind of tweak that a bit. I put don't reply email in here because that's what I saw was being taught and preached by Microsoft. But I'm going to say don't trust the email. Don't trust email. You want to verify. So if there's a link, if you click on the link, look at the URL. You would be surprised at the sites that it's going to take you to if it's in your spam box. So don't trust email if it's something within your organization and it has somebody's name, it has a phone number, pick up a phone, call them, verify it. So again, social engineering, really the biggest way and the most important way to mitigate it is user training and awareness. You can eliminate it. It's always going to be out there. It's always going to be around. But the best way to reduce your level of risk is with user training and awareness that teaches people to be suspicious and cautious and to verify people's identities and to don't trust email. So that's going to conclude our lecture on social engineering. Some of the stuff that we talked about, we're going to revisit it as we go through the course, especially one of the things we're going to look at is phishing again. But just always keep this in mind. Keep social engineering in mind as we start looking at different attack methodologies and we start talking about malware. So if you have any questions, let me know. If not, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.